Jesus' love has never failed us. He has never failed us yet. And the purpose of God is He's infallible. So this morning when we stand in His presence, understand we don't serve a man. We don't serve someone who's going to come back and tell you what He did for you. We don't serve a person. We serve the sovereign Elohim Adonai El Shaddai God. Through the ages we've come to know that no one is more alive and more truthful and more real than our God. He's indeed the ancient of days. He's indeed the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star. Jesus' love has never, never, never. It doesn't matter what we went through. Last night I was preparing myself and I just looked at around at what God has given in my life. And I'm not talking about the flag and the light and those things. I'm talking about the spirituality of what is happening around me the depth of God's word and I stood amazed at the goodness of God I, and the Lord reminded me it started with I looked at my little Jack Russell while I'm praying she's looking at me it's like you know I'm also praying this is the face that I get and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking to myself but when I look at this dog I see the goodness of the Lord. Then the Lord began to remind me. Somebody drove in my car last year or somewhere in the year. And then Elder said to me, no, 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 you've got a car. So while my car is at the back getting prepared, I wasn't stranded. Elder gave me his car. And I was reminded, but hey, that's the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I, I've come to church, then I was hungry because I didn't have time to eat yet. And when I got here and I'm finished with the prayer meeting, then Mommy Dawn and Uncle Alvin would have already put car, food in my car, not just for that night, for the days ahead. And I said to myself, that is the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So sometimes you want to look at a big miracle. Oh, then, then you say the Lord has been good to you. No, 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 no. Look at where you are right now. And then you see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the loving. In the week, Brother Clive was in hospital. And there was a fifth floor story and another floor story. And the fifth floor is a negative story. And I spoke to his wife and I said to her, we're going to pray that the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob will overrule the fifth floor. Whatever they said, God must overrule it. The next morning, they called me the next day. God override the prescription of the enemy of cancer. The one day they said it's cancer. The next day they said there is no cancer. That is the goodness of the Lord. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. I'm overtaken. I stood in this corner yesterday. Ooh. A few years ago, I wrote it. And yesterday I stood here. I was, yesterday was, it was a bitter suit down for me. Because when everything is happening, I looked at the goodness of God. When I wrote in to him, never did I know about almost, well, all my leaders, most of them were writing yesterday. And those who didn't write yesterday, they're going to write on Tuesday. And I said, God, when I wrote into him, met, it didn't even cross my mind that this was what I was going to look at a few years down the line. Ooh, the goodness. 
fullness of it. We graduating. If everybody graduates in the word school, we graduating 52 students. When you get, when you're out of this building, 
Pastor Brother Peter, listen to what the atheist said. When you're out of this building, just open a mega church. This man doesn't even serve the Lord. What did I find a mega camp? What did I find a mega camp? I see because I, the CNC said for me, I don't see you in any building here. I said, an elder went on Friday the Lord's been speaking to me about our tithing boxes for the last month and the Lord said you can't end this year with the size of that of that tithing box if you end this year with the size of this tithing box then it means Chantel you don't even know where you're going to you have no vision and in me you have vision and the Lord Myself and Elder went, and we went to get bigger boxes. It's my pastor calling, he's gonna cut it for us. And the Lord said to me, You need to see things ahead of time. Ahead of time. So this box, in the box, I the clean. And work over my now, work over my now. When he confused, we see people. And a box grouter as your mother. Can we sing the song, The Goodness of the Lord? I won't preach this morning very long. Because what I have to say is going to hit home, I promise you. I want Pastor Chandra to lead us in the song, The Goodness of the Lord. And then I want you to take your husband's hand. I want to take your wife's hand. And if it means, Sister Heidi, you need to go and stand with your husband, then that's what you do. If it means you got to touch your husband, if it means, then you say, God, I'm touching the goodness of the Lord. If you're a single person, then put your hand on your heart and say, God, I've seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Come on, let's worship God. I love you,
your goodness, your mercy, your grace has been faithful towards us, God. No one could have done what you have done. It was you that kept us, Lord, from having a nervous breakdown. It was you, God, that kept us from getting a heart attack. It was you, God, that kept us through the season of COVID. Here come Messiah. It was you, God, when there was no income, you provided for us, God. Thank you, Lord, that it looked like craziness at the end of the month. Lord, you still provided for us. It wasn't a man. It was the goodness of the Lord. Thank you that you're giving us favor in the boardrooms. You're giving us favor at those shops. You're giving us favor at the municipality. You're giving us favor at the bank. You're giving us favor, God, at the deeds offices. You're giving us favor. And I will see. And I'm going to see. And I'm going to see. Of the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. No one did for you what God did. No one. It wasn't a man. It wasn't a woman. God used them as the gateway. But it wasn't them. Clark, let's settle in that this morning. I want to wish Pastor Rodney, I didn't know it was your birthday, Pastor Rodney. So from, my, from me as today as a leader, but you're a father over my life. You stand as a father in so many areas in this ministry, not just because of your age, but because of your journey in the Lord. And today I respect you and your wife for what you mean. If I say firstly to me, it means the ministry. Because now I'm no longer a woman, I'm now a nation. So I want to say to you, thank you so much for your dedication and your love and your commitment towards this ministry. Thank you that you make it a prayer. It is not a grap me. It's a you make it a dedicated prayer point to pray for me and for this house. I don't wonder if your desire is for this house to prosper. I know that is your desire. I know that you pray for us. So this morning, not just for myself, but from all nations, Tulsa Glory Ministries, and especially the men's meet the men's ministry, we want to wish you a happy, blessed, prosperous new year that is coming your way, and may it be many many years to come. May I stand here in a year's time, not on this day, hopefully on your birthday. When was your birthday in the week? Today. Happy birthday. Can we put our hands together for a leader of this house? Thank you. Ek wil ook in die kerk vir jaar, is lekker om in die kerk te vir jaar. So dan pa mens is nader in die heren as in die week. <laughs> I want to talk this morning about um, continue, continuing on the message of Abraham. And I am, yeah, I absolutely, I'm so glad that we are recording today's evangelist anchor because um, what I'm preaching on is, uh, it's literally a book that I'm going to write. That, that's no two ways about it because what I'm ministering out of the book and then also Pastor Arthur, welcome to Cape Town. Stand over the means I can see. When he comes city, CEO. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm sure your family is very happy. Um, <clears throat> um, the word that the Lord gives me is an absolute, it's an absolute, it's revelation from the presence of God. I didn't read the books to minister on this message. I'm in my prayer room. And the Lord delivers. God is showing me things of the, of the first book of the Bible. 
that is blowing my mind. My, the, Genesis like no al woest gelees van as make-up, as lipstick, as al hondse tong wat die oor is. There's so many things. <laughs> Genesis is becoming more alive now than any time ever. <laughs> so God has been nothing but faithful to us. And we're talking about the kingdom for the year, but this message is to show us where the kingdom of God really and truly started. And we've had multiple, um, I want to say, actors where we portrayed what God is busy doing. And I hope in the future, I'm sp speaking to Session about a few plans for 2024, that we, we, can, we can basically have a play and play it out so that we can see what these characters really and truly look like. Because in your mind, you have an understanding, but there is a deeper revelation behind. For me, it's when I read the Bible, Pastor Rian, it's like I read the Bible, and I think I told you, I read the Bible, but it's like this one thin sheet of paper, page, it's like there's a thousand in between. That's what I see. Because it's the mysteries of the Lord that's on the inside and behind the scripture. So don't just read the word of God and think I've got it. No, no, you don't have it. Because the word of God is from generation to generation. Myself and Pastor Colin were speaking to Evangelist Anka in the week when I was recording for Christ's Cake. And I said to her, my grandmother, oh my Ifa, she couldn't read and she couldn't write. But the only thing that woman prayed was scripture. And let me tell you how she got the scripture. Back in the day, in the years of apartheid, Pastor Roderick, she was the, the maid in the house like many of our grandmothers was. And she would put her ear to the, to the kitchen, to the, to the hole of the key of the kitchen to hear what the white man was teaching his children. And she would listen like that to the word of the Lord because she didn't have a Bible at, the end, at that time. And even if she did have one, she couldn't read. And even if she had one, my father them at that time was too young to read so that she can understand it. So what she did was she put her ear to the door and what the man told his family, she would listen. And that when that woman began to pray, she, it, her spirit was like, she had an equity. She was like a, a recorder by herself. So whenever she heard the word, Pastor Tisa Desiree, she would hear it and then God would make it, would literally then impart it into a DNA. So when Oma Ifa began to pray, she prayed pure scripture. And today we have the, the freedom of having the gospel freely given to us. The gospel is given over to us. We have access to the Bible. We have access to worship. We are worshiping this morning freely. No one is standing with a gun outside the door like in other countries where we, where we cannot worship God freely. And yet we don't know the word of God. Yet we don't spend time with the word of God. And the key about the word is the qualification of the coming is based on the knowledge of what you have. And yes, he done. None of us can say, Lord, but I didn't know because you know. If you didn't know two years ago, you definitely know now. So if there's someone in this room this morning that has not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal Savior yet, I want to tell you there's going to be a problem judgment day if you did not receive him because your attendance in the church doesn't make you a believer. That's the problem. So you need to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior. Many people we introduced to the church, when we were even on that side, look at where they are. They are not here. Do you know why? Or says the Ehrensach. But the, the gospel is a serious business. The gospel, you know what we are? What I am, a pastor, any man, any woman, man that is preaching the gospel. We are making sure or we're bringing you in preparation, not just for this lifetime, but the lifetime year after. So what we're trying to do, Pastor Ivan, is to make sure that when you receive Jesus Christ, you get the full knowledge of the Word of God. So the day when you close your eyes and your coffin is in front of the church, then vulnerability, then we don't fall over our words to think, did this man not go to Jesus or is he the devil? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we bury you, we've got confidence that you are going to be with Jesus. And that would act for heart to the end of the two. Amen. 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 I, said, I said Friday morning over the radio, please don't cry the day when I die. Please don't. You're like, what's going on, miss? But don't cry. I'm going to be better off there. 
Many times I've dreamt about my family members that has passed away. And the one message that they told me was, tell this person I'm not coming back. So I'm going to open my eye. Because let me tell you something. Heaven is not a place you want to come out of once you are there. So I want to talk this morning about Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God, God brought, brought, when God brought, when God brought, when, when, when Jacob was born, Jacob was born into a bloodline blessing. Jacob, and we've, heard, we've heard, I've said this multiple times, so I'm not going to go over this again. But I'm going to ask Elder again, I'm going to ask Pastor Ivan again, and I want to ask Kurt. Yeah, Kurt, I just want to, because I want to focus on Jacob. I mean, the reason why we are coming to a close on, on this part of the, of the covenant blessing of the three generations. Because remember, Abraham was a generation, Isaac was a generation, Jacob was a generation, and out of Jacob came the 12 sons of Israel, and I'm going, you are going to be blown away. You are going to be blown away with what the Lord is showing me. And remember what we said a few weeks ago is that whatever, whatever Abraham did had a direct effect on his bloodline. It had a direct effect on what happened afterwards. It had a direct effect, Susanna, on what you do as a parent. So if you don't walk correctly, don't tell your child to go to the church, but you are watching Manchester on a Sunday morning. You've got to train the child in the way that they ought to go. And after many days, the Bible says, training means I show you how this thing is done. Don't tell them to pray, but you don't pray. The child needs to hear you pray. That's how you train them. You're training them with something that you know and something that you actively do. So that's when, when I train you, I'm showing you, I'm modeling what this thing looks like. So when you do it, you can, you can copy me. This is why Apostle Paul says, if you don't know how to serve the Lord, follow me as I'm a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Copy then me. As any bit of dini, for me. This is what Christus for. It is what it is. Because he was mentoring people and some of them didn't know how to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. So he said, if you don't know, watch me. Because there's going to come a morning where that thing click and then you'll say, ah, I've got this. Thank you, Paul. I'm going. Do you get what I'm saying? So here is Pastor Rian. I need that thing and I need my Bible. To go my yifa. So we understand this is Abraham. We understand that this is Isaac, son for Abraham. And this is Jacob. So we understand that. So we understand that the promise was there that he's going to be the father of many generations and many nations. But we also know that it took a minute to get to this place. When this son was born, Isaac, son, when this son was born, Isaac, Abraham was a hundred years old. Pastor Arian was a hundred years old. So it took a minute, it took a long time. For, for, for Abraham, for the word of the promise to come to pass, it didn't happen overnight. And sometimes we backslide because you watch God on your Kronos, on your Kronos watch. God is not on your Kronos watch. God is on Kairos time. He's outside of time. That's the difference with Kairos and Kronos. This is Kronos. That's Kronos. Kairos is God's supernatural timing. And that's the reason why the Bible says a thousand years to God is like one day. And one day is like a thousand years. But don't think because we are in time and God is over time. Don't think that God doesn't. He knows how to redeem your time. Things that you lost. People that lied. People that stole from you. Let me tell you something. Come in right standing with God. God will redeem the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm has stolen from you. God will give it back to you. And many times, double the time, He will give it back to you. So when Abraham asked, when the Lord promised him something, he took a hundred years before the son was born. Eventually the son was born. This son Isaac now had another, had an, had son, had another son, two sons, Esau, like we said, and Jacob. Jacob was the one that no one, uh, only his mother loved him really. His father was not, was not fast on me. He, was, he seemed to be a lazy guy. He didn't have his, and he seemed to be conniving. He sold the birthright of his brother Esau. He was lying. He's conniving. He's doing this. Everything that he does just doesn't look righteous. And he doesn't look like he can carry the bloodline blessing. Because everything that he does is out 
of the will of the Father. It's not in the will. And it doesn't look like you can carry the bloodline blessing. And it doesn't look like you are blessed. And it doesn't look like you're anointed. But oh boy, don't you know that God doesn't look at your works. God looks at your heart first. And then He will save you. And He will deliver you. It doesn't matter how bad you smell of J.C. LaRue. And, and whatever you get drunk. No, when he's still there, God will look beyond that. Because sometimes the people that smell like wine, their hearts are more pure than you and me that is in the church. Sometimes we can gossip more than the world can gossip and then we think we are holy. I will preach it like it is. Because remember, I'm not preaching for all nations out of glory. God has elevated me. I'm a global preacher. So I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to someone in Malawi. I'm preaching to someone in Nigeria. I'm preaching to someone in Spain. I'm preaching to someone in Europe. I'm preaching to a, quite a few people. So don't get, if, well, if you know what, if the shoe fits and it's on you anyway. You deal with it. You on your own. I've got to deal with what I've got to deal. Because the word of God is a double-edged sword. Ekle mei dang ook. Ekle mei dang. So we understand that the earring in your ear, the twist in your coffin, it's a tattoo up. So it's like Jesus Jaini, man. And the people judge people that has got tattoos. All right. I said, you know what, Mark, for you, like a second in Chester, you, of you don't net to a school of Spanaki. That's not what I'm saying. Because somewhere in your life, you came out of the world with a testimony of a tattoo. But guess what? If you look at elevation worship, that man with those tattoos, they are worshiping God and they're leading us into prayer and they're leading us into worship in this dimension that will blow your mind. And you and I, that doesn't have one tattoo, Oscar is a buddy lady. Hey! Masata Rebosika. So stop to judge. How open the church has the mentality of an ordeal. We think we are better than other people. But you know what? When the going got tough, it was the unbelievers that helped us in the day of trouble. It wasn't your own brother. You know why? Because if they helped you in the church, they were going to gossip about you. Ora masata. I slams auntie, he lungs on. She knew it was not going good with you. Hello, Marco, Ruth, Pot, Bruyani, Auntie Gatti, Latino, Clean Kenners, Wakan, yet a slams auntie. God will use whoever he wants you to bless. Emma Sata. Because sometimes we just do self righteous. It's just me and my house. Uh huh. But what we miss is. Somewhere along the line, someone extended his hand to you. Now you don't want to extend your hand to someone. Remember, let me tell you something this morning. The Bible never said that there was going to be an angel who's coming to your doorpost. The Bible said, Jesus is going to ask you, who, what, why didn't you give me food? Why didn't you dress me? Why didn't, then you're going to ask God, but where were you? Then he was going to talk about the man that was scratching in the barn. He's going to talk about the drunk woman that was knocking at your door. He said, I know. Knock, you never open. I ask, you never gave me. So here we are this morning, and we are in a place of self righteousness. And we're in a place where we think we know better than God. And we think we have figured out the word of God. Let me tell you where was Jesus seated. He was in the houses of the unbelievers. <laughs> this is why the Pharisees couldn't believe that he was the Messiah. Because he was more with the, with the ones who didn't know him than the ones who knew him. The others followed him. He said, I'm here. The disciples were so in the flesh. They chased the children away. And Jesus said, don't you know, to them belongs the kingdom of God. And let me tell you something else. By the way, Peter, John, Mark, Luke, let me tell you. If you do not become like they, you will never enter the kingdom of God. And not the problem, when they rack you up for any other thing, what has saved us? They rack you up for any other thing. They rack you up. Who let David say, "Oh, hey, become like a child"? The Bible says, "If you humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will lift you up." 
humble yourself. I want to guarantee you a fall. Pride guarantees a fall. Hey, thank you, Spirit Rasek. Hey, thank you, Spirit Rasek. Let me tell you something. I will give you five minutes. Sometimes you lost the car. Sometimes you lost the house. You know why? You, everybody thinks that you're this, you're this amazing guy. But in the back, back of the ranch, you struggle with the spirit of pride. And God stripped you from a few things. And everybody thinks that you are this great guy. But back at the house, you are a liar. You are a, you're a womanizer. You beat your wife. You lie to your family. But you you come in the church and you want to act holy and God will stop you. So Jacob was a liar. But it doesn't matter because his heart. And the other problem was he was directly connected to a bloodline blessing. And no one can say to me, he can only make net what he will. He can do nothing because Abraham was blessed and I looked at this last night. Genesis chapter 12. Abraham said to Lot, Abraham said to Lot, you have to come at least decent, like, I think this so. I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to do it, I don't know how Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? God told Lot, God told, Abraham told Lot, God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, come out from your father's house, come out from your family, come out from your people to a land that I will show you. Abraham, Abraham never knew where he was going to. God just said to move, put up and as he move, panic to waste. All right? So God shows him. He comes out. But with him still is Lot. Lot is still there. And Lot, <laughs> Lot has said some. Lot had not so full fear, just Abraham. But the workers, you know the story, the workers began to fight amongst each other. Not Abraham and not Lot, they were cousins. They weren't fighting, but the, but, the, but the people under them were fighting. Listen to this. So Abraham in chapter 13 said to Lot, Lot, we've got to break away from each other. Because you know what? This thing is actually not going to work. You need to go and I need to go. Chapter 13, he said to Lot, Se separate yourself, you go and you come and, and I will go another way. Please separate yourself from me. That's now in verse 9. So, and, and look at this. Yes, deep. Look at this. It is not the entire land before. So Abraham said to Lot, please let there be no strife. Exuka Lot. Exuka volunteer. As a young adult, a lot can spill. Pete, to my group of Pete, I said that I think I know me. Abraham, thank you so much for that. Thank you. Abraham had a cousin called Lot. Lot and they, they had a good relationship. There was nothing wrong with their relationship. But you were wealthy. Abraham was wealthy and Lot was wealthy. You both had a lot of cattle. You had a lot of animals. You, had, you were rich in livestock. Rich in livestock. So the people that worked under you, they began to fight. And they were disagreeing. And they were arguing. So Abraham said to Lot, you know what, my, my cousin, you choose a place for you. You choose and whatever you choose, you go and then I will go. Ooh. Lot comes out, they come out, and they choose. Abraham tell Lot, here is the land, choose. Because it's vast. Pastor Arthur, look at this one. Ooh. So Abraham said to Lot, please let me, let there be no strife and disagreement between you and me. Nor between your herdsmen and my herdsmen. Because we are relatives. It's not the entire land before you. Ple please separate yourself from me. If you take the left, then I will take the right. If you take the right, I will take the left. So Lot looked around, looked and he saw the valley of Jordan as well as a well-watered land everywhere. 
This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It was, listen to this. This thing blew me. It blew my mind. And I'm sure you know it. We all know it. So, Lot looked and he saw the valley of the Jordan was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen to this Bible. Listen to the Bible. Listen to this version. It was like the garden of the Lord. Listen to this. Listen to the next one. Like the land of Egypt. As you go to Zoar at the south end of the Dead Sea, then Lot chose himself all the valley of the Jordan based on what he sees. And he traveled east. So they separated from each other. Abraham settled in the land of Canaan. And Lot settled in the cities of the valley and camped as far as Sodom and lived there. But the name of the men of Sodom were extremely wicked and sinful against the Lord. They were unashamedly sinful. Okay, so let me just give you the revelation that the Lord gave me yesterday. Two things. Egypt, remember, was where Joseph was. We're going to get there later on. Um, Joseph was taken to Egypt. Remember that. Remember that. Remember that. Maybe not get to that today, but remember that. You know, you know that. When Lot looked at the land that, that, that Abraham said to him, look, everywhere is good. He looks towards the east. He says, it is a well, beautiful land. Take whole lake, Tilant. It looked like the Garden of Eden. Even, even Egypt was in a state that it looked like Eden. Here come Messiah, fang, 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 means about wakker in the So he looks at something that looks on the eye. It looks prosperous from a distance until he got there. So from a distance, he saw the land had water and it was well watered and it looked good and it looked sharp and it looked, hey, this is it. I'm going to live the good life until he packed his bags and he got to the place and he realized, hey, I'm in the wrong place. But it's a bit too late. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Worry, listen to this revelation. He chose us. Worry. Look, listen to this revelation, Pastor Naomi. Listen to this, Pastor Ria. He chose us because he follows the blessing. Amen. He follows that looks blessed. Yerima Sata. Abraham can choose any land. Because he brings the blessing to that land. No, 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 no. Hey, Messiah. He didn't. That's why he told Lord, you choose first. Because it doesn't matter where I end up. I bring the blessing everywhere I set my feet. I will be blessed. So it doesn't matter where I end up. The land will be blessed because I will get there. Tell me that's not a revelation from God. Ooh. Pastor Naomi, so it doesn't matter what they do in that house. It's your house. It must be blessed. You are the owner of that land. It is blessed. A child with a covenant promise doesn't look for a blessing. <laughs> you don't look for something that looks good. A woman and a man that carries a covenant promise. You don't go where it seems to be good. As a matter of fact, you go where no one else wants to go. You go because when I arrive, 
everyone in that place will be blessed. Oh, Ramasata, Ekamasaya. It doesn't matter. When we move in here, half of these buildings were open. As the Sousa Bridget. When we came here that day, there were still cars at the back. When we got here, <laughs> when we got here, that's the reason why that company, <laughs> they are afraid that you would leave. Because if you leave, if you leave, Pastor Rian, the place will close. Do you know why? Because I carry the promised blessing of the Lord. So I'm not looking for a green land. Worry, worry, worry. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am the green land. I am the prosperous land. I am the covenant blessing over this land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lot. You may be seated. No, no, no. You're not going to die. But Lot has to go back. Verse 5. And that's where the difference comes in. Between someone that carries a bloodline blessing and someone who is just walking around. Sometimes your land is dry until you connect with me. Sometimes your land is dry until you connect to someone that carries an open heaven. Sometimes your land is dry until you come under the right anointing. And God will unlock your wells. God will open your doors. God will deliver you from evil. Hallelujah. My God. I don't care who lives in your house. I, this week, past, as a matter of Saturday, Pastor Naomi's tenant, she was sleeping and her house burned almost down. But guess what? Because this woman and this man are prayerful, they are serving the Lord, they are destiny focused. The woman wake up just before the entire roof fell on her life. Let me tell you, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers us. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Get connected with someone that carries a covenant blessing. Get connected with someone that is unmoved by green grass. Because sometimes the grass looks green, but it's plastic. It doesn't carry eternal value. Sometimes you are confused by what you see right here and right now. <laughs> the Lord said to you on Friday morning, you don't move from your job. You don't go. Here he says, Yapus. Listen to the dinner. Because if you move, that woman that needs your... Whoa, whoa. Worry, 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 worry. When you move, <laughs> worry. Your enemy's bonus depends on that. I'm going to say that again. If you move now, the one that's fighting you is just going to miss everything. And here's the thing, God is getting you ready for ministry. So you're going to have to love your enemy like you love yourself. <laughs> the one that you are, Pastor, Pastor Arthur, the very ones who is fighting you and that is going to fight you, you still have to pave the way for them as well. Emma you are still connected because Judas could not be just taken out from the table of the Lord on the Last Supper. He needed to be there because if he wasn't there, he never would have assigned, done the thing that God told him to do. He never would have got the police officers and tell them, when I get to Jesus, no, 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 this Jesus, the one I'm going to kiss. He was so ordinary, they wouldn't even know it's you. So here we are. Here again, it's coming to be a coffee. So we see. So he says, doesn't matter where you go, I carry this thing. Jesus said, God said to Abraham, this thing is on the inside of you. It doesn't matter where you go. Mitchell Splain, he has said no. Ravi, he has said no. Yalsis, he has said no. Mark up every gate that has been shut. You will have to open. Not because of anybody. It's because I am here. And as long as I am here, God is going to 
to provide. God is going to open things. God is going to break away every sin, everything that is not from God. As long as my name is on it, you will see what God's going to do. That's the difference between someone seeking for a good place and someone that says, it doesn't matter where it is. Where I go, Jy kan geplay het aan die bosleisplaag. When you, the other people were there, toe was daar meise. Toe vreed hulle die kaste op. And I'm telling you that God's honest truth. Net toe die mense ook keer, toe stiek hy kakker laks sy oor uit. Toe stiek jy ook nie skanne. Until you got there. The anointing of God. Sometimes you don't even know what happened to the mice. You don't even know what happened to the cockroaches. They just vanish. You know why? Because your prayer. Move them. Move them. Move them out. Oh, cockroach. Oh, mice. Skeef de jirikas as net drolle. Skeef de jirikas as net a mice. Jy kan nie eens, jyre wat gaan nie aan jou bos jyre. Tore sê, tore sê, hey, had ek my gyn altaar slat. Had ek my gyn altaar opsit. Toe sê die altaar plant. Toe sê die spinnekop ook soma weg. Toe sê die altaar plant. Toe sê die meise weg. Toe sê die altaar plant. Toe sê die kakkerlakke weg. Toe sê die altaar plant. Toe sê die weeleise weg. Ek praat sy, my kom wat jy af in die bos is plaas. I want to show you something. Genesis shit shit shit. <laughs> Genesis 35. No, let me tell you something. When I moved into Ravensmith, the only thing you love in my house was to call boss Lisa. The only call I have my bed, I look my little bed full of boss Lisa. To say, what, 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 Hulle wil een bloedbank uit my uit begint. Ek sê, jy maak jou moos leid laat man. Jy kon sien jou om my kop toe hier in die morgen. Ek moet net om my gaan bid. Wie dan jy is, jy, ek sta nou op en ek begin een bestraf. Hy die miskiet wat jy op. En dat is een groot miskiet. It sounds like a joke people, but it's actually not a joke. It's actually very real that I'm telling you right now. Want dat doet die vrouw naar die doem toe. God said, I've placed you in charge of all of these things. Because of my cup. Then God said to Jacob, listen to this. Go to Bethel. 35, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. When God told Abraham to move Pastor Colin out of his father's house, he went away, obviously, and now a lot was still there with him. The Bible says he came to a place. Verse 4 of Genesis chapter 12. Abraham departed as the Lord had directed him, and Lot was not with him. Verse 6. Abraham passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem, to the terebinth, terebinth oak tree of Moriah. Now the Canaanites were in the land at that time. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, I will give this land to your descendants. So Abraham built an altar there to honor the Lord who had appeared to him. Then he moved from there to the mountain of the east of Bethel. And he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. So it's in there, but there's more land laying around him. And there he built an altar on the land and he called the name of the, 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 name of the Lord in prayer, praise, and in thanksgiving. That's chapter 12. Go to chapter 35. God tells Jacob, yes, he's got children, he's old, he's older in age, he has wrestled with the angel of a dharadroma. God tells him in chapter 35, then God said to Jacob, go to Bethel and live there, make an altar there to God 
who appeared to you when you fled from Esau, your brother. Then Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, get rid of the idols and the images of foreign gods that are among you and ceremonially purify yourself and change into fresh clothes. Let and then let us go up and go up, let us go, let us get up and go up to Bethel. And I will make an altar to God who answers me in the day of distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the idols and the images of the foreign gods they had in the rings which were in their earrings worn as charms against evil. And Jacob buried them, buried them under the oak tree near Shechem. You know, they, they tell you, listen to this. When I ask them, the Lord, what is this thing that they say they want to keep the evil away? Do you know there was a time in now Nilang Trahi, they have this thing, they say it looks like a, it looks like a, it's a ring, then it's got this feathers. Do you know this feathers? And it says that you catch bad spirits or flies or that. The Lord told me that was what they were talking about. Dream catchers. It is, it is actually an idol God in your car. Because God says there's no dream catchers you saw. God is the only one that gives dreams and interprets dreams. So the Lord showed me that they walk in their ears with things to prevent them from catching evil spirits. So Rachel and Leah was with this anointing under this man, even Rachel herself. They were still worshiping foreign and idol gods. Now who, what is that? That blonde pot that is in Zimbabwe has come and has been sold. That pink blonde pot and that pink hand. No, 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 come sit here. You have a pink hand in your head. My mother has a pink hand. Amal, what a pink hand has had, it's sun up. No, it's sun up. My mother had clay pot had. And you know what they said? Give all clothes to the Zimbabwean people and we will give you that big pot and a good. It is idol gods. It is idol gods because they, they worship and they put things in those pots that they dedicated to the gods of the sun and the gods of the mountains and the gods of the rivers and the gods of the mermaids. And now they come and they sell that you. And this will come. You even have fallen my car. Because there's an idol god in your house. Get rid of it. Amen. The Lord God help us. Say, pink pot. The blood of the Lord is in you. What was that then? They carried with all this rubbish. She's walking. Rebecca and Leah is walking with the covenant blessed man. But they don't even trust him enough to know that he's able to bring them in the land of good and honey and milk and whatever. They trust their father Laban. The, the father, they stole their father's gods. Yeah, Masata. Sometimes, worry, worry, worry. Sometimes you marry into a family. They portray to be holy until you got in the family. Share the anti for you. News bacha. Kalkop. 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 Kal Ek het niks so geloop, toe sê ek nie my mens, ek is kant en klaar met jou. Moe nie my jou toer gees hier by my kom nie. Olifants hoek. Nee, 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 nee. You've got to cut yourself from every idol worshippers. You've got to make a clear cut distinction hier so. You've got to say to yourself, Mommy, I love you, but this is what I'm in agreement here. Because God told Jacob, tell your wives to get rid of the idol gods that is amongst you. Because as long as they are here, you will never enter what I've got prepared for you. I'm almost done, family. Pastor Jeremy, when I say, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to talk to you. 
I'm just joking. I want to show you something. I'm not going to get through everything because this is deep. Really, Lord, it's deep. So they gave Jacob all the idols in the foreign gods and they buried him under the oak tree of Shechem. Shechem, Shechem. Everywhere this man was sent, God sent him to, was on the footprints of his grandfather. It's amazing. As they journeyed, there was a great supernatural terror sent from God on the cities around them. And, and for the reason the Canaanites did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan. He and all the people who were with him. There he built an altar. And he called the place El Bethel, the God of the house of God. Because their God had revealed himself to him when he escaped from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and was buried below under the oak. I want to show you something. to chapter 13 of Genesis. This is now where Lot and Abraham separated. Verse 17 of chapter 13 says, Arise, walk, make a thorough journey around in the land through its length and its width. God is not telling this to Abraham. For I will give this land to you. Then Abraham broke camp and moved his tent. Listen to where he moved his tent. And he came and settled by the grove of the terebinth tree, oak trees of Mamre. The, the oak tree of Shechem, I researched it. It is exactly the same place where Abraham moved to. God told him, you move there. That, listen to this, listen to this. Abraham broke camp with Lot. He settled there for a while at Shechem by the oak tree. Jacob's wife, her, her nurse died. They buried her. Under the trees of the, the oak trees of Shechem in Mamre. It seems that you come connected with a place where you need to separate and where death will take place at the same places in your father's life that you will have. Yeah, Masata. It seems that there's a separation coming because Rachel's nurse died. She was buried at the same place where, this, where God told Abraham to separate from Lot. He landed there. The separation took place. He got there. Jacob got there. Rachel's nurse died and she buried the woman. They buried her under the same oak tree that, they, that Abraham lived a few years ago. But now I'm going to blow your mind because God blew my mind. Look at this. Come bring your stuff. We're going to go and research it. Jacob's name is changed. Then God appeared, verse 9 of 35. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came out of Paddan Aram and declared a blessing on him. Again, God said to him, Your name is Jacob. You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. Then God appeared to Jacob again when he came out of Paddan Aram, P-A-D-D-A, -D -D -A, and declared a blessing on him. I want to blow your mind. I want to go home. Go to Genesis chapter 17. Seventeen, God met with Abraham and God spoke to him. God established his covenant with him. God told him, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Chapter 17, God changed the name of Abraham. Verse 6 says, I will make you exceedingly great, exceedingly fruitful, and I will make your nations, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. It is the same chapter that his wife's name was changed. Look at the opening of chapter 18. 
Now the Lord appeared to Abraham by the terebinth trees of Mamre in Hebron, which is in Canaan. Can I help you, sir? When God said, when God appeared to him, his name changed already at the terebinth tree of Mamre in Hebron that is situated in Canaan. Go to 35. Then God, in an invisible manifestation, appeared to Jacob again when he came out of Paddan Aram and declared a blessing on him. And again God said to him, your name is Jacob, but you shall no longer be called Jacob. You shall be called Israel. Look at this. It, it blew my mind. Genesis, Genesis 11, Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 17, plays off in Genesis chapter 35. Do you know, if you go and research the places where the names was changed, Abraham's, Jacob's name was changed in Padam Aram, which is on the border of Mesopotamia, which is in the city of Canaan. It is exactly, if you do the research, like I did last night, you will see Jacob's name change exactly where his grandfather's name changed. God met with Jacob and changed his name. He told him, you are a scanniver, you are a liar. Everything that you do is not right. You are, you are stealing bloodline blessings and whatever. But I'm going to do something to you. Get in alignment with your grandfather's footsteps. I am going to do what I promised him, what I promised your father. I'm going to do to you. But I'm going to meet you in the place where the covenant blessing has been released. I need you to be worry, worry, worry. Sometimes your life is so cursed. God sends you under the leadership of someone that carries a covenant blessing. Sometimes your life Life is such a mess. You don't even know why you are taken out of that church into this church. You know why? Because in this house, we carry a blessing that has the power to override your curse, your negativity, your lies, your jealousy, your envy. You don't even know why you are here yet. You don't even know why you're here. But just stay because in a minute, you're going to see how God is going to begin to turn things around for you. That's the reason why, Sister Veronica, Pastor Veronica, you need to know who journeys with you. You need to know who walks next to you. You need to know who your leader are. You need to know that he or she carries a blessing. You need to know this person is trustworthy. You need to know this person doesn't steal money from the church. You need to know they don't sleep with a man or a woman. You need to know there's no record of slandering and backbiting. You need to know everything to the place of his name change was where his grandfather was. Because everything that was God said, if you miss it here, I'm a liar there. And no way, because the 12 sons has already been born. And Joseph is already on his way to the palace. And Perez has already been in the process of being birthed. So Jacob, I need you to get in alignment so that the promise of the covenant will come to pass. I need you to stop drinking now because if you don't stop the deliverer in your house, you cannot teach him. So I'm closing. <laughs> so it doesn't matter where you were. It doesn't matter how you did it. It doesn't matter how many times you were bad. Here come a blessing for nothing. But God for your promise it, and he guarantee he's going to give it to you. It came over to him. You didn't even, this was not, this was not the apple of your eye, son. Esau was. But guess what? You had no say that Jacob was going to be the blesser. He's going to be the carrier of the 12 sons of Israel. And not even Isaac could do anything about it. And the Bible says, listen to this and I'm closing. Jesus. 
eventually, Joseph was in die, in die, ek spring goor die boodskap, <laughs> Joseph is, is, is in die paleis, eventually kom Jacob terug, Joseph vind ek, hier is my pa, pa is een roderik, amal weet nou, Jacob is hier so, Joseph weet ook nou, sê pa, jo, jo, Jacob weet Joseph lewe, Benjamin is daar, listen to this, this man, who was the worst of the worst, eventually dies. He dies. <laughs> what if? Faru, the king of Egypt, tells all his officials, get up, we are going to the funeral of Jacob. Messiah. He's the one that was denied by his own father because of what he did. But guess what? He dies. Hey, Ramasata. The, his loins, his son Joseph is ruling in the palace of Pharaoh. The Bible says he dies. Pharaoh comes to the king. Jacob comes. Joseph comes to the king and say, Pharaoh, my father has died. Pharaoh tells every soldier, every general, ooh, ooh, he tells them, get up, get dressed. Jacob passed away. Oskhan for Jacob here, a starts begrafenis. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Pastor Mark. Ooh, here. Wanneer die Heere jou in die handen krijg, sal jy een staatsbegrafnis hee. The Bible says, every general, every leader, every officer in the palace of, Fer, of, of Potiphar was assigned to go with Joseph to bury his father in the grave of his grandfather, his, grand, his grandmother, his mother and his father. Everyone, the, it was a family grave. Everyone in that Abraham bloodline family, they were, they were buried in one grave. Let me tell you, by the time the body of Jacob came past the generals of Potiphar. They saluted a general in the realm of the spirit. They saluted a man who went back on the assignment of God. They saluted a man of faith. My God. So when Potiphar stood and they saluted, do you know what they saluted? Chandre, they saluted obedience. They saluted faith. They saluted, he said, get away from the idol God. They saluted a man of righteousness. Worry, worry, worry. Mommy, don't. Potiphar, the king, saluted Israel. Because he died as Israel, not as Jacob. So when the generals and the officials of the, of the, the house of Potiphar, they stood at attention. It was one thing, worry, worry, worry. It was one thing when Joseph came in. But it was another thing when Jacob's body entered. One of the patriarchs of faith. No man. But listen to this. Zabi, he never started as a man of his word. But he ended. At Maki Saak, who ons begin te tie. Ilse, at Maki Saak, moet my nie kyk by my processie. Watch my by my einde. Watch me when I get to the end. Then we talk again. God bless you, you may be seated. <laughs> Hallelujah. The worship team can come. I'm a, tell your name, I'm a, I'm a word in progress. <laughs> Don't look at me now. This is not the final product. That, this, this, don't go 
gossip now because you're going to waste your time because I'm in progress. Muni nong skeneri, may kariki kosu an. He black black but don't know what to do. I'm in mana ko isu what that didn't come back home. But don't worry about me now. I'm on my way to my destination. I'm on my way to my Canaan land. I'm on my way to my promised land. Oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Year of a day is my ten days of honor rand. More is my ten days ten days and rand. What are you talking about? One day. My father didn't have to work and nothing was right. He didn't, he backslided. And Uncle Raymond, Bishop Olkers, told my dad to build a house for him. And at that point, my father didn't even have a bucky to the devil on my kapruk. So when he came back to the Lord, he worked for Bishop Olkers. And you know what he did was, he couldn't even pay his tithe because he had no money. He was at the verge of losing his house. Listen to this. Thank you. He had nothing. Pastor Mark, he had nothing. So because he had, he was building the bishop's house and he had no vehicle, they said, Kom ons help maar vir broer Gert, dat hy net die kerk so, 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 so busy kan kry, om sy mense, so Brugert Sondag aand Da bring na die busie van die kerk na Brugert Sa is toe, Brugert Weitz En dan was Brugert Die kerk sa bas die busie Morgen ochend Dion is het so staan op Dion is het so Brother Dion Is het so my broer Da was sa die busie Want morgen ochend is Dion dalle na die busie uit Morgen aan, daar was hulle weer uit bus. Elke dag, want hy was die kerkse bus. Woensdag aan, daar moet kool in hulle gauw gaan, pas die kool in hulle, en my pa hulle, as my pa nog even gaan lis, waar is hy nog broer, waar is hy, daar gaat hulle westbank toe, en delf toe, en sy bourbon plus, daar hulle die kerkmense op, so die bus kan nie vol sy ment wees. Donderdag ochend is hy weer besuit, vrydag ochend. En my pa gaan na bishop toe en sê, my finances kom nog in die kreeg. Bishop sê vir my pa, broer Gert, hoe lik jou tiendes? My pa sê, get om, get om, get om. Daar begin nog ooit tiendes in. Eerste maand, tweede maand, derde maand, vierde maand, toe broer Gert die bakkie. Maar toe kan para nie, hy bakkie wat ook so gemaakt, Hulle stoot om af by tiende land, hulle stoot om op by tiende land. Maar sy eie bakkie gehad. Het was die lankie. Toe kom broer Gert vir my ander bakkie. Maar broer Gert is geblacklist. So die ding gebeur by verstand, verstand wat vir amal, vir amal rei goed gee. Heile wat jy betaal, 20 miljoen aan boor vijf jaar. en broer Gert maak covenant met hierdie box brother Peter in een jaarse tyd toes my pa van blacklist het was nie lang daarna nie so brother Gert bought his a proper buck it wasn't long after that brother Gert fixed his M5 BM no 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 his red or his rover his rover It wasn't long, years and years, ek praat hier nou van honderd jaar hier, it wasn't long after that, the same man, that his whole entire family, didn't come to anymore, because of how bad he was in sin, let me tell you, it wasn't long after that, he didn't pay a tithe, he paid a twentieth, it wasn't long after that, the people that told him, they don't have jobs for him, He gave Kuro schools to them to build. It wasn't long after that. He bought vehicles, cash. It wasn't long after that. His houses that he stayed in, 
the balance of a house was a thousand rand here, a thousand rand there. I'm giving you a testimony this morning. It doesn't matter where you start. Say covenant make hot. I want to tell you this morning. If there's someone in this room that doesn't know Jesus, they can swear cry my means. They can swear cry. They can sickle. Nie maar sikkel met die Heer, hy nie die verstaan nie die Heer is al vir ons. There's a difference when you, when you swagger in God. Swagger in God is, ek eet nog by hoe wat. By die Heere kree is swaar, as die Heere kree die kosie, as die kree stop die oever die voor. Die sisters laai vir my kos af mense. Ek slaap die honger. En ons ek, hulle begin die buiten bring, ek sê sê my, ek is honger. Let me tell you something. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, it will not go well, Clark. You have to come under the discovery of the blood of Jesus. Because when you do struggle, Brother Arthur, mm, let me tell you something. It's easier with God. It's easier because here's the thing. I don't carry the burden of this ministry. It is the Lord's house. Ek leen nie wakker nie. Want en as ek wakker leen, dan sak ek op my knie en sê, Heere, ek sal kom met hierdie ding man. Hy help nie, dit is not mine. Dit is yours. I want to tell you this morning. Sluit covenant met hierdie box. Nee, sluit covenant met God. Sluit covenant met God. Sluit covenant met God. Because you will be shocked to see what God will do for you. Hallelujah. Let's bring our tithing and our offering to the Lord. When you offer this morning, you say, God, this is a 20 rand, but it's actually a 2,000 rand. This is a 5 rand, but it's actually a 50,000 rand. So in faith, say, God, I don't have this morning. Weet jy vanmorgen geld nie? Weet jy vanmorgen offer nie? Nie sal die geld nie, gie vir nie sal geld daar achter. Nie sal kost daar nie so. He said, stand up, Sister Ilza. She's going to bless her sister. Weet jy geld vir morgen? Daar sat, daar is een vrou. Ons moet hier een tiende daar, een offer daar. Stand op, my vrou. Niemand is kamer nie, hy is van die Heere. No no one here is going to be ashamed. If you don't have money, you stand op, my vrou. Stand op, my sister. Stand op. Now we make sure that they have an offering in their hands. We say, 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 Gier het vir die persoon. Halleluja. Jy gekry my sister. Sister, sy het 200 rand vir jou gegewe. So no one feels out of place when it comes to offering. Had hulle nie vir jou sê, nie, 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 stap uit, stap uit my mens. In die huis van die Heere maak ons mekaar skaam nie. Ons maak jy my skaam skaam nie. We are living in the humbleness of God. So we all have a seed to sow. So let's all sow. So Father, this morning in the name of Jesus, I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. I seal the blessing this morning 
over your people. I seal the blessing of the Lord over whatever they are sowing into and trusting you for, Lord. I pray the multiplication of the Lord on the blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, bless all nations, house of glory ministries in all areas of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Seal the word. Seal the promise. Seal the provision. Seal the open door. Seal the blessing over us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You my soul. Trust in you, oh Lord Jehovah, you. I trust in you, oh Lord Jehovah, you. I trust in you, oh Lord.
Now may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious toward you. May he lift up his countenance over you and give you his peace. And the church of God say, Amen. Bless your neighbor one more time. Say, I was blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Then you turn to another neighbor and say, I was blessed because you were here. Because you were here. Hallelujah. So long, bye-bye.